God bless everybody this this evening, Friday night, October the 7th. We're here in the house of God. We're finishing up our uh, our um, our study, our our talk on um, on Elizabeth and uh, Zechariah. You know, um, the last um, two Fridays, as well as this one, you know, Pastor says, well, let's get something together for, for couples. Let's get something together for our for our marriages. And and, and, and Zachariah and Elizabeth, you know, there, there was a lot of things that they ended up, um, <laughs> they're, they're, they're in a very small portion of the Bible, their story, you know. Um, but it's so powerful if you take the time to look at it. You know, we, we explored um, a verse and a half on the first night. Um, last week we got through the second half of the of the second verse, so we're two verses in now in our study, and 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 and, and hopefully we can we can make it a little further. But there's just so much. Right? Why were they righteous? Why did God choose them? You know? And then the fact that they were obedient, man, obedience before the God. We went through the scriptures last week. That's what he desires more than anything. Mm-hmm. He doesn't want your fancy clothes. He doesn't even need your hundred dollar offerings. No, and what pastor needs them. <laughs> but God does not need anything. God is the owner of all the cattle in, in the hills. Brother Eric and Sister Rosie said hello. God bless you, Brother Eric. Thank hello. you for being here with us. Uh, uh, this evening, as we continue walking through this, as always, brother, you're more than welcome to chime in, brother. But God is the owner of everything. I had a conversation with my brother this morning, and he was like, you know, I'm, I'm blessed. I'm blessed, you know. We, we've done so many things in our life, and we could be anywhere. But he has his check. He got his SSI. He has his job. He has his priorities right now. He helps pastor. He works doing his things here in the church. And you know what? If you examine the story of Zechariah and Elizabeth, that was their job too. Everybody has a place yes. when it comes to the work of the Lord. Um, God's going to supply all our needs. It all belongs to God. Me and you shouldn't have nothing. Yeah. Really. It all belongs to God. But he only asks for a, a little bit. And he wants us to be obedient. He wants us to, 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 to have a relationship with him by, by reading his word and, and having a life of prayer as well as a life of service. You know, we're called to go out to the highways and the byways and preach the, preach the good news. Amen. Mm-hmm. So as we get started this, this evening, um, we're going to say a word of prayer. We uh, are missing... Uh, Brother Eli and Sister Rochelle, so we're going to remember them in prayer <clears throat> as we uh, open up this um, this evening. So if you could just pray with me. Father, I just thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord, because you are. You are Lord of Lords and King of Kings. You yes. are the great I Am, the Alpha, the Omega. You're the beginning and the end, Father. You're in our yesterday, you're in our today, and you're already in our tomorrow, Father. There is nothing, Heavenly Father, that is... That is, that is impossible for you, Father. So we ask that you would continue to work, Father, in our lives as well as in the lives of our church here. We want to remember our Pastor Madeline, that you would continue to uplift her and, and pour into her and give her wisdom and, and shelter her and protect her and all that she does, Father. And we want to, we want to say a, a, a special prayer for, uh, for Sister uh, Rochelle and, and Brother Eli, Father, that you would just... Be with them also, Father, that you would shelter them and you would protect them, that you would give them what they need, Father. Be it a healing touch, Father, whether they need strength, Father, or whether they just need a little bit of time alone together, Father. Sometimes we need that as couples. We just need a, a little bit of time alone so that way we can we can get into each other and then we can get into the Lord, right? The Lord needs intimacy with us as well as we need in- intimacy with our partner. So, Father, we just thank you. We just want to bless your name as we get started here and as we finish up this story here with uh, with Zachariah and Elizabeth and this this power couple, as we've been calling them. They're a power couple for the Lord, for the kingdom of God. That their example, Father, is, is such an example that we are still talking about it today, Lord. So I love you and I thank you. And in Jesus' mighty name, we 
we say amen, amen. and amen. amen. So we're in the book of Luke. We started in, in verse 5. And we read verse 6 last week. And I think we're going to continue on from there before I, I, I stop and, 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 and start talking and then we, time gets away from us. So this is what it says in the uh, first chapter of Luke and we're going to read in verse 7. We already talked about Zechariah. We had already talked about them being from the bloodline of Aaron and we had already talked about how they were found righteous upstanding in the eyes of the Lord and how they had obeyed all the commandments of the Lord. All the commandments and regulations. How many were there? 631. 631. Dang, that's a lot of rules, huh? We can't even obey the speed limit. Uh, <laughs> sorry, I wasn't looking at you. I wasn't looking at you. I promise. This is what it says in verse 7. It says, They had no children because Elizabeth was barren, and now they were both very old. Mm -hmm. Man, I could kind of sit there for a minute. Their society, if you didn't have children, God was bad at you. Mm -hmm. You guys think so? You guys can't have kids. You guys are sinning before the Lord. People were like, it was, it was, it was like uh, it was like people were putting shame. The community, the other people would put people into shame, and this is what Elizabeth and Zachariah, as the husband, had to live through, right? Man, and still to continue to serve the Lord and and be righteous and obedient to all the laws. It's hard to do uh, what God wants you to do when everyone's talking about you. Mm -hmm. Can you? Can, you, can I get an amen there? Yeah, amen. <laughs> Nobody likes being the butt of someone else's joke. Nobody does. Especially when it hits. Ugh. Or maybe in the back, huh? Ugh. We get stabbed in the back. Nobody likes to feel that way. But here we have Elizabeth and Zachariah who found themselves blameless before the eyes of God. So verse 8 says, One day Zachariah was serving in the temple. For his order was on duty that week. When I read that, I thought about us. I thought about me. The Mendez. The bloodline of the Mendez. And all the men that serve the Lord that are of the bloodline of the Mendez bunch. There's a lot of us. That, that's, that's like Zachariah and his family. Their household, their clan, it was their turn to go and do something in the temple. Verse 9 says, As was custom of the priest, he was chosen by lot to enter the sanctuary and burn incense in the Lord's presence. So out of all the cousins, Lito, Rudy, Richard, myself, Eric, um, Timmy, all the other the Trevinos, the Barcelonas, all the Mendez clan, all of them, the men, and our sons. My son Alex, Jr. Christian would be there, right? Eli's sons, Richard's son, Rudy's sons, Sonny, he would be part of that Mendez clan also. His son, the clan, everybody, that's the way it worked. Think about our families and how separate we are sometimes. On purpose? I don't think it's done on purpose, but everybody grows apart and does their own thing, right? I think about it in our household. You know, when we grew up as children, we were always at Grandma's house for Christmas. We were always at Grandma's house for Thanksgiving. We were always at Grandma's house every Sunday, eating, playing, throwing figs and rotten plums at each other. That's the way we grew up, right? Played across the street with, 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 with a lot of the kids that grew up on that, that block right there on Emmerich, Emmerich Avenue, right? And that's just the way it was. And now families are all busy. Two parents got to work in the home. 
There's not enough money for the area that we choose to live in. And then sometimes that leads us to turn our back on the Lord. Does that sound, uh, is that a fair statement? Yes. That's a fair statement, huh? Mm-hmm. I know the Lord is big enough to provide all of our needs. I know he is. Mm-hmm. But sometimes we don't wait for him. You know, also, like Tommy, if he gave us everything we wanted, what would we need him for? We wouldn't call him. Right? To me, he gives me, he gives us enough. We, we have a roof over our head, food on our table, you know, clothes on our back, you know, and our bills are paid, you know, and gas in our car. You know, I, I'm blessed. I'm rich. That's how I see it. I mean, there's times we know we may not have a dollar in our pocket, but everything's paid. Everything, you know, and. Like I tell them, as long as we have each other, it's all we need. And that's how I see it. That's how I see it. Our kids have grown in. And I'd be lucky if I, if I talk to my daughter once out of the week. You know, or, you know, my son is on vacation. You know, and I have the other one there, but there's times too. I, I have to share him. And that's something I get, I have to get used to. Sharing my kids with their, their, with their in-laws, you know, and stuff. And at times I find it's, it's just me and him. I am. You know, and but like I keep thinking and remembering, like Pastor says, in the end, it's just going to be you and your spouse. Mm-hmm. And but I, like I said, when we go back to, I felt, I mean, I'm, I'm rich because I don't, I didn't have when I was younger what I have now. And I thank God for that. But like I, I always feel like if He gave us everything, what would we need to call Him it for? We need to love for us. Exactly. And then we need want more yeah. because we want it, not because we need it. We feel like we. Mm-hmm. Title to give me what he says promised me, mm-hmm. and that's not what he wants from me. Mm-hmm. You know, um, but yeah, it's, it's the bills are paid, food on our table, clothes on our back, roof over our head. Not that what more can I ask for, but what more can I ask for? Mm-hmm. So what I want is is the love from him. Oh yeah, and it's his love. It's just yeah. knowing that we're set. I'm good. Brother Eric says he remembers his grandpa saying, all we need is beans and rice and Jesus Christ. There you go. <laughs> I mean, that's if, pretty much what all we need is beans and rice well, and I, Jesus I Christ. I think it's, you know, it's, a, it's an individual, you know, uh, 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 relationship with God. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yes, we're together and all that, you know, but God is supposed to be first in some of our lives. You know, um, my relationship with him is different with our relationship with him, you know. Oh, and that's, and that's, you know, that's something that, that we have to do in life we as should. believers, you know what I mean? Yeah. We have to live that lifestyle, you know, and, you know, I'm, I'm first to say, you know, I fell short by two times, you know, and I, I don't do some stuff, but I'm back again, you know, and, and you know, I'm just, I keep praying and saying, God's going to make a difference, I know he is, yeah. you know. I remember when I was on fire, when I first started coming, you know, and, It's coming back, you know, little by little, it's coming back. God's 
make a difference. So I, like I said, I'm just uh, call it waiting in line. Or have, or have a well, when you come, God is you God is faithful. He's that much more. He's more faithful than what we are. Yeah. He's so much faithful to know the desires of your heart. Yeah. Of when Leo comes in on Sunday, I'm gonna bless his son. Yeah. I'm just and and that sometimes that's I, I know that's what I had to do. Yeah. I just had to you know what? Let me just let me be in my own zone. Let me just be in my corner by my wall in my zone of not hearing nothing but and seeing nothing but Jesus. Yes. And I actually times just can see him just wandering. I feel him yeah. just wandering and just walking and going up to and, and touching and loving on people and just and sometimes it's not that I have to block that out because I want his heart. I want yes. my desire in his heart. And yeah. to have that it's it's the most awesome, powerful, beautiful thing to me because sometimes I gotta just walk in and shut everybody out. I'm not Okay, man, don't be upset, but I'm not trying to offend anybody. Yeah, I'm not ignoring y'all. Yeah. I just want to be in my zone. Well, that's what's supposed to be doing mm-hmm. him one on one, you know what exactly. I mean? Exactly. It's supposed to be to have you two and him, or, yeah. or me and him and her, you know. Yeah. It's not about that, you know. Mm-hmm. You know, the book of Proverbs 3 3 it states that, you know, about being faithful, you know. It says, uh, 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 love and faithfulness in every reason, find the money in every thing, with favor inside of man, the most of all, sight of God. You know what I'm saying? And he talks about, you know, faithful to God. Or, you know, basically, you know, for them to have favor on you or man to have favor. I'd rather have, I was talking to my co-worker the other day and I was saying, you know what, uh, it's all good at the job, you know, and you got favor, favor by man, you know, everything. that's okay because that's all you want is just a little bit. Mm-hmm. But I don't want the little bit, I want the full price. Mm-hmm. I want the full thing, you know what I mean? That's why I'd rather have, have God, you know what I mean, instead of, you know, being, yeah, instead, of, instead of having that favor at the job. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? That's okay because God can always work on people and get you that favor. You know, and I stand like that. He's been listening to me. You know, I try to pick his brain a little bit. You know, people know God, but they don't know God. Exactly. They know him, but they don't. They know of him, but not know him. Yeah, yeah. Sister Karina, you had something you wanted to say. It's just Paul and I were just talking about this over dinner about like um, kind of this topic about like you know the reassurance of God and how people at his job are talking about change and different things taking place maybe and Mm -hmm. um, he said you know babe I'm not even worried about it you know so then it made me realize like yeah we shouldn't be worried you know because that's something that I struggle with is worry wonder the future um I mean I can go as far as Jacob being married right so (laughs) so I would like slow down but one thing I said as I was looking out the window I just said you know babe that's the thing is like we have the Lord and he is going to provide for us no matter what it is. And that's the reassurance that you're saying that I want, that we want as a couple where it could be anything, but what more what more could you have, you know, besides what like the Lord is everything. So that's right. I think now in the world and just with society and the struggle and everything going on, um, the ladies I work with been really um I don't want to say emotional, but just what's going on in the news and stuff. And, mm-hmm. you know, in my mind, I'm thinking to myself, like, you know, that's why you have to pray. And I kind of will say little things, you know, but I'm new there too. So it's like, but it's the reassurance, the anointing, the prayer, like we were talking mm-hmm. the other day, and mm-hmm. how God gives us that power to fill the reassurance. And that's where I am at right now yeah. in my walk with God. It's like um, when Pastor always reminds me, Jesus, there's just something about that name, and that's the part where it's just like there's no name above. So, yeah, you know what? You'd be surprised how many people believe in God, how many Christians there are, and you but you won't know that unless they say something. And you yeah, say because something. you feel like it's a, a it's a topic. You, yeah. But once you do, the security guard, I was telling him really quick, um, where I work, he's a man of God, and I've even been coming in a little bit early because every day he's showing me a devotion. He's an older gentleman, and um, he'll say, I have it ready for you, sister. So it's like sometimes when I told Paul when we're talking or when I'm reading it, like he'll he'll say, um, I, th- I think he's probably from like a Baptist church or, you know, not that it matters, but he's just like a little more, yes, you know, like, <laughs> I'm kind of like looking around like, is anyone going to come? But why should it matter? You know, but he gets really... 
So I look forward to that. Well, and you're then, building him up, whether you know it or not. Well, I feel you're like right. he's building me up too. No, I he, you're right. building him up. Yeah. Yeah. Both how many times you ever? Share with you. Yeah. yeah. How, many, how many? How many people do you think he's ever been ready for with a scripture? No, yeah, that's you know, because he said I've been waiting for somebody to come through here. You're and, building so I told Paul it's I'm really working my my cousin right <laughs> <laughs> I told Paul it's really nice to see him. He's an older older man. He's a security guard, and um, today he said, um, you know, sister, or yesterday he was saying. You know, um, God has us like this, and He was rocking like you know, like a baby. And when I turned around, I thought to myself, "Thank you, Lord, that we can, you know, share." Encourage each other, yeah. 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 And then I'm able to bring it home and share it with Paul, and then it's like, then there it goes. You know, it just keeps keeps writing. So, Papa Dan, you had your hand up over there. You know, you talk about. uh, as, as to leaving God, you know, because of the circumstances, sure. you know, but I never knew God. I never even knew there was a God. I was raised at a real, real young age when my mother passed away by my grandmother. We just go to the Catholic Church, you know, because we we're, we're Catholics, they said, and uh, bad experience, you know, with uh, the nuns and stuff like that. Thought it was a lady, but it was a man, mm-hmm. and he used to strike us really. He had a mustache growing, but he would shave it all the time. But you could see it. Anyway, long story short, uh, didn't have had a father, but was never there. Had no mother since the age of maybe eight, nine. I can't even remember. Six. Huh? Six. Six? Okay. Yeah, because we had uh, kids every year, but. It's like just recently really found God. Amen. You know, because uh, when I was on vacation, I mean, I came to church here for a lot of years, Cathedral Faith, a lot of years. But like I say, I was walking the fence because my lifestyle was like I had to do what I had to do in the streets. I was always in the streets, learned from the streets, you know, did drugs and all that stuff, you know, and then now my kids were on drugs and everything else, but you know, I I, I, should, I, I don't even deserve to have these kids or grandkids, you know, that's the way I felt. I don't, I don't deserve it for what I did, you know, this, this lifestyle I lived, now they're doing it, you know, but God was still there, and He still blessed me. Yeah. Even when I was on vacation, He blessed me. Every day, yeah. I saw favor from some of the guys that watched over me, cooked for me, yes. you know, and 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 that's God. That's you know, God. I, I, I know that I know that I know that was God, yes, you know. Now how could I not do what He asked me to do now? You know, I'm finally realizing maybe I can't do it, but I got to give it a try. You know, and 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 uh, life is different now. You know, it just I love him. Amen. You know. So here we have Zachariah and his wife. They love the Lord too. They love the Lord so much that it shows in their action. They didn't give up on the on, on their duty. They could have gave up. People talking about them. People treating them. But no. Zachariah now is chosen to enter the temple to burn incense before the Lord, which is something that wasn't just anybody, right? His clan was chosen to work in the temple. Now, out of him and all of his cousins and all the male people and then family, maybe one time in a priest's life, they would be chosen to go into the temple. Now, this is where Zechariah finds himself. He didn't go in every day. This is his one chance. He's been training for this his whole life. It says here in verse 10, well... <clears throat> it says here verse 9 
As was custom of the priests, he was chosen by lot to enter the sanctuary and burn incense in the Lord's presence. While the incense was being burned, a great crowd stood outside praying. This is how special that that task was, that there was a crowd of people outside because somebody was coming before the presence of the Lord. The presence of the Lord was scarce in those times. Remember, since the book of Malachi till, till now, God had talked to the people for 400 years. And he still served the Lord. He still obeyed all the, all, the, all the commands. He still found himself righteous and upright, him and his wife. This is why this couple is so special. They still did everything in the midst of everybody else turning their back. We're not, God doesn't even talk to us no more. I'm not going to that church anymore. That's the way people were acting. I'm going over there. Look at them. They're dancing. They got free food. Garden and Sava. <laughs> right? They're killing cows and chickens. I don't got to give up any of mine. But no. <clears throat> Zachariah and Elizabeth were faithful to God. And here we have in verse 11, Zechariah was in the sanctuary when an angel of the Lord appeared standing to the right of the incense altar. Uh-oh. First time ever going inside. And now there's an angel there. Mm -hmm. You think he was spooked? Yeah. He was. Would we? Would we be a little uh, shaken up? Yeah. <laughs> this wasn't part of my training. This wasn't part of my training. Who are you? I'm in trouble now. You know. 400 years, God had not spoke to the people. And now this guy goes into the temple to burn incense. And he, you know he can tell this angelic being. You know he can tell. Only God's supposed to be in there. Only the presence of God is supposed to be in there. And now there's this figure. Sorry, brother. When you say 400 years, God had not spoke to the people. Like, would he, like, to anybody? Or they didn't there were know? prophets that were speaking oh, to okay. the people. Master, am I on the right, right yes. line here? Yes. God chose not to speak to them. And we can go back to the book of Malachi. Maybe it was because they were messing up. Story after story in the Old Testament. Once again, that's the way it starts. Like the first verse of whatever chapter. Once again, they were doing what was wrong in the eyes of God. Malachi was one of the last prophets. Malachi was the, one of the last prophets. Again, over and over and over again, God delivered them. God protected them. God won battles for them as people tried to overtake them. God gave them. He blessed them. He prospered them. But just like a child who gets everything that he wants. Spoiled, spoiled little cats. <laughs> yeah. You know? And, and, and I'm not saying that every child was like that. Because here we have John the Baptist and his wife who, who weren't. And you know what? There probably were other people. But for our story, like Brother Joey says, these are the important figures during that time that were chosen. Remember, book, I mean, the book of Luke is written by Luke. Luke was a physician. He, he writes down special things that maybe the other ones, they didn't choose to write about them. But here we have a doctor, an educated man, writing about the story, mm -hmm. right? You got to look at it from that point. And, and Brother Joey opened my mind sometimes. I sit there and I'm like, wow, this guy, his brain opens up my mind yeah. sometimes. But that's the way we have to look at this, right? Zachariah, he's in there doing what he was trained to do, and there's an angel. What does the angel say? Verse 12 says, Zechariah was overwhelmed with fear. Yeah, he was scared. But the angel said, don't be afraid, Zechariah. Called him by his name. Don't be afraid, Leo. Brother Paul, Brother Dan, Pastor Madeline, 
Pastor Manley probably wouldn't have been afraid. No. She would have probably had fight on both sides. She would have given the fuck up. But the angel said, Don't be afraid, Zachariah, for God has heard your prayer. Mm, that and should you, be a All right? Okay. Wait. You, you, you think they forgot about their prayer? They were old. Huh. They probably prayed for a baby 20 years ago. Huh. It doesn't give them a date how old. They don't give a year. Right. It's been hard, though. Me and my brother were talking about this today. All the good and all the bad. If you think you don't have to say sorry about that thing you did wrong, you're sorely mistaken. You will, we will, I will stand before God and it will be held against me. We have to. Those 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 pieces of paper that we that we gave out. When we went up to the mountain, there's all these different things that sometimes we forget. We want to sweep under the rug. Maybe there is unforgiveness. Maybe there is stuff that needs to be that needs to be spoken a little bit more. So it's awesome and it's beautiful. But God is speaking to Zechariah. For God has heard your prayer, and your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son. He didn't just say child, he said a son. You know, back in those days, to have a son was very important. It's like in China right now, right? They were known to get rid of a woman baby, a female baby, oh, because yeah. they want a man baby. Yeah. Same, same type of, of thing. Can't hear us? It's low. It's low. Go ahead, continue. I'm listening. Mama? Not Sister Lynn. <laughs> Sister Lynn can talk loud. Working on it, Sister Angelina. Zachariah, God has heard your prayer. The Cuevas family, what is it? I heard it. But is it time for God to answer it? And I think we talked, we touched a little bit on it before we got started. I'm sorry, but my brain has already been in all this, right? What is it that we have been asking for? Yes, we come to church. Yes, we come and, and we serve the Lord. But you know what? God heard it the moment we said it, the first time we said it. There are things that me and my wife had been praying for. And I had to transition from, Lord, once again, I want to ask you. Yeah. We're not supposed to be babbling. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We are talking to somebody that has ears to hear us. Yeah. But we do that. Yeah, see, that's where I, I get confused on is because, I mean... I, I pray and I ask prayer that God brings my son home, brings him home, and, and I know it's on his time. Of course. Not on my time. Okay. And because it was up to me, he'd been home a long time ago. Not up to but, you. But my thing is, is so, because I've been praying for the last eight years for him to come home, is it time for me to stop praying for him? No. So let me finish my thought here. Okay. As we prayed and prayed and prayed for one thing or another, I had to transition to. Lord, do this, do this, do this, to Lord, I know you heard me, and I'm going to just say thank you now. Your will. Okay. Lord, I know you heard me the first time, and I'm not just going to keep crying and begging and asking. I'm going to just be grateful. I'm going to be thankful. Not only am I going to be thankful with my words, I'm going to be thankful with my actions. And I'm going to wipe my tears and I'm going to get up and I'm going to go forward and do exactly what you want me to do because that's what you... I, I'm not supposed to dwell in that area of where I was broken and upset and crying and hurt because we do. We find ourselves in these areas sometimes. Yeah. I'm sure that Zachariah and Elizabeth, when they first started praying and it didn't happen after the first year, second year, 
every quinceanera and, and baby dedication they went to, it probably was another stab in the heart. You think? I mean, during that time, it was something prestigious. It was a very high honor and a lot of respect was given to a family that is having children. It was, it was, it was like almost like it made you wealthy. You think they were wondering if they were going to have children or not? You know what? At this point, brother, because the Lord saw them as righteous and upright. Yeah. I don't think that their heart was. Because sometimes you, you and me might put on a mask of, yeah. and in, inside we're really hurt. Yeah. But the Bible says that they were found righteous and upright. I'm not saying that they were perfect because when we talked about righteousness and we talked about all this stuff, if during that time Jesus had not come and died on the cross yet. So in order for them to, to, to be forgiven for certain sins, they had to bring a sacrifice and an offering. But what does that mean? That means they had to say, okay, what we did was wrong. Now we have to go. That's repentance. That's repentance. Owning it, my wife says. Own it. If you did something to offend somebody, own it. If you can't go and apologize to that person, or if that person don't want to hear your apology, you still need to go to the Lord. That's right. Whether he accepts it, it, accept it or not, he still, yeah, you know, it's it's us. We need to clean ourselves because where God is taking us, that ugliness cannot go. But like Sister Lynn was saying, do you stop praying? At you don't stop praying, but you just change the way you pray to thank you, Lord. I know you like, heard me. Like basically accepting like it's going to happen. Like yes, ma'am. Acting like it's yeah. going to happen. Exactly. Faith. Faith. Faith is the substance of things hoped for hope with the for. evidence of I things hope. I want. not I mean, seen. See Brother it. Eric says, faith is what moves the mountain when the woman yeah. with the issue of blood, uh, issue, uh, touched the hem of his garment, it was her faith that killed her. Faith. See, her faith put her to move until she touched that hem. And Jesus asked, who touched me? Because he felt the power, the virtue, just leave him. Yeah. Papa Dan. I believe that before you even pray, God knows what you're going to pray for. Uh-oh. That's getting kind of deep. Yeah, because he is still, he's waiting for us. We're waiting for him to do our prayer, but he's waiting for us to do what he asked us to do. Sure. To be faithful to him. Yeah. To love him and only him and worship nobody else. You know, to get right with God. Yes. You know, give him that 100% and watch things start happening. Brother, there's, there's, there's times when um, we want to keep taking money out the bank, yeah. but we ain't deposited nothing in the bank. <laughs> right? Before we repay what we've already been given, we're asking for more. Does that does that sound like I'm on the right 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 page there? We want God to give us. We want God to bless us. We want God to hear our prayer. And believe me, I've been there. But then there's something that God requires of me also. Right? There are things that God wants me to do. Tommy to do. And Tommy needs to listen to God. Listen to God. Listen to him. So that I know what he wants. So that I can do a good job. So that way my prayer can be heard. Right? Not todo pa' acá y nada pa' allá. That's what they say in Spanish. Everything this way and nothing that way. We don't ever want to be in that type of a, uh, of a relationship, especially with God, right? But going back to the woman that had the issue of blood, who went to every doctor, went through every every soothsayer, she went through everybody that had a bowl of chicken bones and threw them and says, I can heal you and help you. She went to everybody, paid money, paid all this stuff, and nobody could do anything except when she found out a man named Jesus was 
walking through town. Amen. And she didn't even, he didn't even have to, Lord, no, he didn't have to do none of that. He didn't have to pour oil on his hands or nothing. Desperation to me, I see desperation. I, I hear desperation. I'm so desperate to, I, I'm so desperate to just receive that healing. I'm so desperate to want him, need his love, that change just to change. go and touch his, the hem of his garment. I'm not waiting for him to come to me. I gotta go to him, <clears throat> fall to my knees, and just touch his hem. That's that's it. That that's straight desperation. That's the that's the need of. Not wait for that miracle like Tommy Tommy was saying. All over there, more over here and then over there. No, I I don't want just here. I need to go to him myself. I need my time. You need your time. You need to touch that hem of the garment and not worry about anything, anybody. And matter of fact, whoever's sitting next to you better watch out because you're gonna straight just pour into them because you need to go and touch that. <laughs> don't wait for him to come to you. You go to him. You touch that hem. We all need to go to him and touch that hem because there's a lot of things in our lives that's going on that is is upside down, messed up, coming against the enemies, thinking the plans of, oh, this is what they got going on? Let me see how I can stir them up. Let me see what I can interrupt here. Let me see how I can move this here and, and put it this way. Let me see how I can work this over here and, and start the arguing, the bickering, and then this and that. I know what I can say. I, I know what I... I I don't have to say, and she's gonna think she hurts something. Mm -hmm. I know what to put here to make us, to make you feel like, no, I, I, I'm irritated, I'm annoyed, I'm ir whatever. Or, or beat up, or yes. beat or and, and to what, for what purpose? Because God knows the purpose and the plans for your guys' marriage. And how much powerful you guys would be how much more powerful you guys would be? How much more powerful you guys would be if you just go to the hem yourself? Don't wait for him. You go. You go and touch that hem. Because power couple. Power. 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 Yes. Power. And Morgan Hem. There's power. It's time. God's been saying it's time to raise up. It's time to raise up. Rise up. Rise up. If you can imagine what he's doing in our, your home, if you guys would just unite, get together at, and Hey, guess what I read today? Pour into him, pour into her, pour into each other. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine what's going to pour into your children? And your grandchildren? And your great-grandchildren? I love that saying, everything and anything connected to me is going to be blessed. Everything and anything connected to me, if I start doing it now, I'm like touching that hem of that garment, then guess what's going to happen? All that breakthrough that I'm claiming for my family, generational curses are going to be broken that my kids, my grandkids, my great grandkids, and once again, everything and anything connects to me is not going out the battle of that. Amen. What are they going to do? They're going to worship. They're going to praise. And that's what we need for our family. That's what we need for our couples. That's what we need for our church. Because we got to pour into San Jose. We got to blaze up San Jose. That's what we got to do. How hard is it, how really, how hard is it to love him not that and hard. pour out your love to one another? How hard is it? Yeah. That's all he asks us of us. We fight ourselves, brother. Yeah. We fight ourselves. We, because of the obstacles throughout the day that we go through, we take it out on each other. Mm -hmm. And we're not giving to God that love because I had a bad day. Don't you come around me. Hmm. You know, I can love God all day until something happens my way. And then my whole thought, my whole chain of thing, everything is turned around. Why? There we go. It's this flesh right here. There it is. Right here. This is what we fight every day. And 
to get to that the woman with the issue I, I always picture her she dragged herself yes. she crawled she clawed her way until she touched that him and it was worth it because she not only felt it but the Lord said somebody touch me Somebody touched me when there was hundreds, let's say, of people. And he said, and the disciple says, what do you mean everybody's been touching you? Uh-uh, uh-uh. He knew somebody. The prayers of the righteous availeth much. Here. Yeah, he says right there, and I, I picture that too. She called. Mm -hmm. yeah. She yes. was going to wow, desperation. Yeah. Desperation, right? And it's like. We need to be desperate in the Lord every day. Mm -hmm. And my aunt yes. and I were talking about that where, like, you know, we say, oh, we just have this big meltdown or this, this, this time with God, but I want that every day. Every day. Like, I don't want to get to these points I was before where it was just like you, you get to this point where you're, it's like, I don't empty. know what else to do. Yeah, no. Like your car getting yes, empty. Yeah. Yes, and like the other day, um, Paul woke up before me and, and, um, when I got up to, you know, to pray and stuff, he was making breakfast, and I, I just felt like I was kind of just distracted, not nothing, you know, being rude, it was just, and I was like, okay, what do I do, you know, do I just not pray, to be honest, like, not pray, but you know what I mean, like, just to start my day, yeah, just, yeah. Like, all right, Jacob will be up soon, and I was like, all right, I'm taking comment a walk, I'll be around the block a couple times, and that was my time, because it's like, you can't, I just can't know where, um, not, not just that, but like the desperate, like I wanted my time to, to come to him and to, to talk out loud and do, you know? Yeah. And like you said, brother, like even though we can pray together, it's like it's still a different, um, I, yeah, I don't know really what you're <laughs> well, walking different from him, like he was saying. Yeah, her, her, her spiritual uh, level with the Lord is very different from my level of where I'm at with the Lord. You know, we're married. We both love the Lord with all of our hearts, yeah. right? <clears throat> she did not grow up watching the examples that I grew up watching, right? There's a little bit different. <laughs> and, and, and you and Paul, you guys are on a personal journey. And he'll read something and get something, and you'll read something different, or whatever it might be. Or you have your your mm -hmm. this person that's encouraging you at work, and even if you come and share with it, it's just different levels, different levels, different levels, different levels, different levels, different levels, right? Mm -hmm. My mom and my dad, even though they were both different levels, right? Everything is different, but it's okay. You think Zachariah and and and, uh, and Elizabeth were. No, different levels. They were both of the bloodline of Aaron. They were both priests of priestly bloodline, but both different. Different. Don't be afraid, Zachariah, for God has heard your prayers and your wife. God knows all things. But see, God knows what's troubling you. God knows what's confusing you. God knows what's worrying you. God knows how much money you got in the bank. But see, these are the things sometimes that lead us to get our own answer. Maybe I need to work two jobs. Well, what's that going to do here? To, to the position that you have in church. Not only like that, it's how is that showing you're trusting God. Ah, mm -hmm. I was getting to that part here, <laughs> Sister Monica. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have a bad habit of letting my car go on E. Like, <laughs> Don't let your spiritual life go to E. <laughs> <laughs> Paul gets so upset. No, no, no. <laughs> That's what I do. So Jacob oh, said, <laughs> so Jacob says, Mom, what if we run out of gas? I'm like, we won't live. I'm like, even if we do, God will be with us. <laughs> <There you> go. <laughs> we'll call dad. <laughs> but by getting that second job, by trying to get a, a, a side hustle is what the way they, they describe it nowadays, right? 
a second income. Both families are working, and then one person's getting, and now there's not enough time to be intimate with each other, let alone go to church. Where is God in the whole situation? And then people are praying and, and upset, and they're crying, and their life is falling apart. But I love the Lord. Yes, maybe with the words coming out of your mouth, but not with your actions. You can't say, I love you, and then never be there. Does that work? It doesn't work. I love you is just empty words without action. <clears throat> Not only that, Karina just said, uh, uh, Paul will take care of it. Don't worry about it. <laughs> so, so we don't want to get to the empty because it's a personal thing. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, we as wives or as husbands, we still have to take care. I'm not going to use all the gas and ever put gas in the car. Mm -hmm. So we have to do our part. We have to do our part how to do and not wait for the next person. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it cost you more. Yeah. <laughs> do, you not, do you do that? No, I don't think it all the way down. <laughs> <laughs> I, just, I, don't, I, don't, I don't like my school has half a tank. By the time I get it back, it's almost... It's between a quarter and half that empty. But it still has gas. <laughs> right? Yeah, it does. Still gas. So we, we get into this sometimes with our spiritual lives, right? Of where we're not really trusting God, right? And yeah, we're making we're making a, a light of, of, of what we do in our in our personal life by letting the gas go down and stuff. But we shouldn't be doing that with our spiritual life. We shouldn't because then we are making ourselves a perfect target for the enemy. We're already on empty if we're talking about it like that. We're already barely making it. We don't have enough to make it through the day or to the next day. Or we don't. Or to the next Wait retreat, the, retreat, the next retreat service, again. or the next Sunday when I go to church on Sundays. Well, maybe you're going to get hit with something on Wednesday. What are you going to do that? You know, brother, I and I'll be the first to say that, that I'm guilty of. I, I haven't read this fucking back. It's okay. I'm not. And, and be, why? Because Neither even in I. school, reading, it was this week. Okay. Like, if reading anything bores me, but I found a book. At the work, I have my daily bread, and I have a book that's called Why God Why. It's what the Spirit, but it's, I'm reading it, and it start and, it, and, it, and I'm reading a chapter a day, and it's like, okay, and I'm highlighting it. Come home now, tell you a couple of times I came home and told her. But then a student walks in and he has a book. And I said, What are you reading it? Oh, it's, it's like it, it just gets me to it's an inspiration. I was like, oh, This is what I read. He's like, book. He's all, Yes, you know. Then I got my so you know, and that builds me because why that you know they're talking, we're talking about it. But my thing is, is, is that this is what's helping me, it's helping me the reading and, and stuff because, yes. Even, you know, we have the Lord in our life, and, but like we talked earlier, the flesh, you know, we're human, we, we hurt, we this, we that. But even though, from my experiences, the trial that I've dealt, gone through, being up there on that, on that altar, I've had put, I put my trust in him and know that no matter what I do, go through or what I deal with, as long as I continue to move forward and do his job, he's going to take care of my children. And I have to stand on that and trust that and know that. And yes, you know, and if, if there's times where, you know what, I just need to be filled. And you, I know my pastor's going to say, you know what, man, sit down. And just, it's okay. Be filled. Be filled. And there's times I'm up there and I'm just being filled. You know, and, but that's okay. Because, like I said, as long as I continue to do his job, he's going to do that. He's going to take, take care, care of my, You take care of God. Yes. And he'll take care of yes. God. Because that's all I ever ask him. Lord, Remove me and use me. So the Lord heard Zechariah's prayer. He actually sent the archangel Gabriel, that's who was there, to talk to Zechariah. But in our lives, we stop waiting for the answer. Maybe not today, maybe not this week, but we maybe we've done it in the past. Maybe we know people that are doing it right now. They they don't trust the Lord, even though they can quote that scripture with you know, <coughs> the bottom of their heart, you know. 
Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and you'll make your path straight. Right? But I could I could fix this if I do this. I just prayed about it yesterday. I asked, I wrote it on a piece of paper so Pastor could pray for it on Sunday. And look at it, I can fix it. Just I'll just go do this. And then you mess everything up. Is that trust? That's a forcing a yes out of That's forcing a yes from the Lord. It's not on our time. There's a reason why we need to wait. Did you know that? And that's the part where it hurts and gets our person. But whose fault is it? It hurts. We make it our fault. We make it our problem. We make it on us because we dwell on it. We we, we dwell on the fact we're looking at the spilt milk and it's spilt. And we don't clean it. We're just looking at it, crying over it, and just well, either who's going to clean it or bawling over it and thinking, oh, how am I going <clears> to <throat> clean it? Analyzing how we're going to clean it. It's not clean it. But that's like what Eric said, words are faith. Exactly. 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 That's what you gotta remember. The woman with the issue of blood. Be that woman with the issue of blood. Touch his hem. What are you waiting for? What are we waiting for? I know I've questioned that. I've heard that story a lot of times, you know, and I remember it. You know, I remember some of it. And when Jesus was coming to there, you know, they heard a man of Jesus was coming, you know, and they were getting excited. That they were getting excited. But what was the reason why he was going through that for? That's the thing. Was he just walking around the neighborhood? You know, I mean, they go and go cruise. What, 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 what the Bible be going? The Who? Bible talks about him, some man, when he got him, and started taking him to his son because his son was sick. That's what the whole story was. His son was sick. By the time he got Jesus to his son, his son died. Mm-hmm. And it says in the Bible that I can remember a long time ago that he told that guy's son to get up. Mm-hmm. And what is the pattern? What is that? He got up. So there's two types of miracles that happen right there. I'm sorry. There's two types of miracles that happen right there. The one where he's going to the sun, and the one where she's clawing her way yes. to get her there. Yes. Yeah. Why? I mean, we all know he was going to the sun yeah. type thing, but going the way of of that way. Why? Yeah. Why did God put people in our path? The, the security guards, the students. Because there's times where God's putting that those people in our path, in these ladies' path, to that's the miracle, but at the same time we're either being the one that is come, the miracle coming to us or it's we're touching the hem of his garment. So that, that can happen both ways. It could be either way, whether she's the issue of the blood or the student was the issue of the blood. Yeah. Whether it was a security guard with the issue of blood or it's you with the issue of blood. Either way, same thing with the son. He was going to do that miracle. Yeah. She was desperate to just yeah. move people out the way. You know, it looks like that was all part of the plan. And it was part of the plan. You know, for him to go that way and for her to touch him, because I mean, I'm pretty sure she was excited, you know, and maybe she knew in her heart that, you know, if she touched him, that she was going to get healed. I mean, she was bleeding for 12 years. I mean, 12 years ain't no two days. Okay. You know what I'm saying? That's a lot of blood. That's a lot of blood. And like Tommy said, you know, that she went to all these other people, you know, the chicken bone people, whatever you're talking about, you know, and uh, all these, I don't know, I don't want to call them witches, but other doctors, other, other doctors, healers, other, doctors. other magicians, yeah, other, and she tried different everything. things. She tried everything. But you know but what? She like Just like your problem and your issue, it's so that God gets the glory. That's right. Nobody else can do it except for God. That's right. Brother Paul, you had something you wanted to say. Oh, no, I didn't. Um, I, I was, uh, I wanted to add to it, like how you guys were saying, empty and, yes. um, you know, leaving the other half. To, to pick up the you know the, the other you know the column or yeah the slack it's uh it's in Matthew 25 where it, it reminds me how if I'm not mistaken but we are like the the bridesmaid right yep. to, to the bridegroom and we got to be ready we got to be that other half that's ready and you know have our our lamps ready with oil full of oil yeah. and not not be lazy and, and keep it halfway because you know like it says in here um, 
5 through 6, uh, chapter 25, it says, well, actually, uh, 2, 3, 2, 3, and 4, uh, but only five of them were wise enough to fill their lamps with oil, while the other five were foolish and forgot. So, they ran it on empty. That's where, yeah. But that's what came to me, that's what came, you know, yeah. that's, that's why, you know, like, I, I come to this Bible yeah. at times where I could just kind of find my way through it and find something of, of the topic and that's why I feel like we're, you know, like once again, we're the bridesmaid and we're preparing ourselves for the bridegroom. And it's a marriage. And it, it's, it's a it's, relationship. It's a relationship, but it, it's... And it should be an like intimate that. relationship. Yes, definitely. Right? Intimate means vulnerable. Vulnerable. We need right. to give everything. Don't hide nothing. Don't be ashamed to come before the Lord with whatever it is that you think you need to get rid of. Maybe, well, I don't really need to tell him that. Well, yeah, you do. Do it. Let him decide whether you're supposed to tell him or not. Let him decide whether it's something worthy of, 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 of dealing with or, or maybe you're right. Maybe it is nothing, but let him de uh, decide that. Give it to God. I see everybody got notebooks. Let's write down some scriptures. Real quick. Psalms 91, verse 15. And then we're going to look them up. Isaiah chapter 58, verse 9. Psalms 91, 15. Isaiah 58, verse 9. Isaiah chapter 65, verse 24. Then we're going to go to Zechariah 13, verse 9. 13, verse 9. Mm -hmm. Yep. Then we're going to go to Luke 11, 9. And then John chapter 15, verse 7. And the last scripture we have is the Apostle Paul. 2 Corinthians chapter 12. Who wants to read the first one? Sister Lynn. And then somebody else can read Isaiah 59. Okay, um, Isaiah 65. Okay. Zechariah 13. I'll do Zechariah. Amen. <laughs> Luke, Luke 11, 9. Sister Rita. John 15, 7. Sister Monica. And then I will do um, 2 Corinthians. You're doing um, John 15, 7. So. Psalms chapter 91, verse 15. It is. When he calls out to me, I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will rescue him and give him honor. Okay, the next one. I will satisfy him with a long life and show him my salvation. Let's go back to 15, though. What, what, what's happening there at 15? He's listening. He says, when, I, when he calls, calls out to me, he's going to answer. He doesn't say, I'm going to answer right away. But he says, I'm going to answer. So to me, it's saying, it basically saying, trust in me. Have faith. You know, is, 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 is that a promise from the Lord? Yes. So then why do we doubt him sometimes? Flesh. Why? But I'm just like, when I hear the flesh, like, I think of that too, but I'm like, Really you, you know, you know what it is. I'm gonna. It, it, this is how I, I think it is. It's one. If, if either somebody has an experience, or are accepted when God has done something for them, that it was God that that answered that answered them. And because it, because it didn't happen right then and there when they wanted it. It happened maybe a few years. Like Brother Sunny says, I'm gonna answer prayer. Why? Because his mom and dad prayed for them. They didn't get to see him come to the Lord, but that that was an answer prayer. You know, the yeah. prayer got answered, mm -hmm. but it was on God's timing. Not, it wasn't on his mom and dad's. It was on, you know. So this is how I see it. Yeah. This is how, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, 
this is, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong. The scriptures are promise of an answer. It's a promise. Right. Who is God that he should lie? Exactly. He's not going to lie to us. He hasn't been lying to us. But sometimes we have to allow the word of God to remind us. <coughs> I mean, it says, I will be with him in trouble and I will rescue him. Once again, you know, like like I was explaining to my friend, to Liz, you know, <coughs> you don't, because she was, she was asking questions. Of and, and I told her, you know, you have the ones that only call on him, they call on him when they need him and put him on the shelf when they don't. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's not a good way. You know, and, and but, you know, She's like, I want to be like, I just say, okay, and that's fine. The Lord knows your heart. The Lord knows your heart. And when you're doing something that you shouldn't be doing, the Lord will convict you. Your spirit will feel it. Because, like we've been taught, God has never left us. He never has left us. We're the ones that have left him. You know, and he's just waiting with his, with his, his arms open, waiting for us to reach out to him. That's why, no matter whether it's good times or bad, he's there with us, and we always have to remember that. That's why he says in trouble. I, I will be with him in trouble. But when we're in trouble, what do we do? We call on God, right? And he's when there. they no matter, call on me, my no what says, I will answer. Not I might answer him. Not, eh, I'll get to it later. It's not what the word says. When they call on me, I will answer. It just doesn't say it'll be. Right. Like calling Uber and and DoorDash. Okay, he's, not, he's, not, he's not DoorDash. It says, I will be with them, like, like, meaning for me when I read that, I will answer them when they are in trouble. Like, you will be in trouble. We will be in trouble. It's going to happen. Yeah, there's no doubt. And then I will be with them. Yep. So that's, you know, I will rescue them and honor them. Okay. Leo, Isaiah chapter 58, verse 9, brother. Verse 9 says, At that time when you call, the Lord will answer. When you cry out, he will say, Here I am. If you get rid of the yoke among you, the finger pointing and malicious speaking. <laughs> Is he yelling at us there? Sounds like it. Can you say it in a different tone, please? <laughs> no, that's terrible. Just listen to that. So, Verse 9 in my in mine says, Then when you call, when you call, the Lord will answer. Yes, I am here. He will quickly reply. And then it says in parentheses, stop oppressing the helpless, stop making false accusations, and spreading vicious rumors. Stop talking about people. Stop stop speaking. Spreading gossip. Stop being uh, that type of person that's that's up to no good. Yeah. Right. Not only that, brother Tom. It, the word that was used, yoke, something. You're yoked to something. Right. It's time to let it go. You're tied to something. You're bound to something. You are together with something that is it, here. You're equal. You walk together. That one thing we have to let go. Because a yoke is something that ties two two things together, two uh, two ox together. So as they walk, one walks, they both go. They both go. So we're walking. Take off the yoke. Take it off. off. What is it that is tying you down? Wow. Amen. Amen. Promise. Mm -hmm. He's still going to answer us. He still hears us. We got to quit acting up for him. We got to quit. Sister Karina, 6524. 6524 in my Bible, which is the good news. It says, even before they finish praying to me, I will answer their prayers. <laughs> yeah. Amen. What comfort? Huh? Of course. That's it? Yes. No. Mine oh. says, I will answer them before they even call to me. While they are still talking to me about their needs, I will go ahead and answer their prayers. Even before they 
before they call, I will answer while they are still speaking, I will hear. Mm -hmm. Promise. Mm -hmm. Promise. It's a promise. We need to stop trying to fix it ourselves. We need to just trust that God is making a notation. He's already heard our, our prayer, and we need to quit babbling. Right? And doubting. For me, it's the doubting. It's the worrying. It's the wondering. Is it when... Um, what, what, you know, can't give me a well, answer. Everything. Just, yeah. you, know, you just don't know what the answer is going to be. So people don't like to hear it this way, but what is doubt? Not believing. Okay, but what is... The very essence of doubt is rebellion. Is it? Yes. Doubt is rebellion. Fear. Okay. I asked God for something. <sighs> I'm going to go do my thing. Turn your back on God. You pray for something and then you sit on it. Basically. That's the way but, I mean. But now rebellion is is also pastor. Witchcraft. It's witchcraft. <laughs> we need to stop being doubters. Trust that God heard you. Mm -hmm. Trust that God's going to do something for you. Trust that God heard your prayer because the opposite of trusting God is anti-God. Doubt. Doubt. So when you look at it like that, it's kind of rough. Yeah. It's a little hard. Well, I don't want. I don't want. To, I'm not rebellious. Well, why did the devil get thrown out of heaven for being rebellious? That's the root of it. Anti-God. Which man? I don't want to be that way. We need to just trust the Lord. And yeah, you know what? We the, the more we do it, the more the better we're gonna get at it. The more we do it, the stronger our spiritual muscles are gonna be. The more we allow God to really, really do what he wants to do on his time, it's gonna get easier. It's gonna get easier. It's gonna get easier. Brother Paul, what does it say in the book of Zechariah? 15, 9, uh um, living Bible. Mm -hmm. I will bring the third that remain through the fire and make them pure as gold and silver are refined and purified by fire. Amen. They will call upon, upon my name and I will hear them. Amen. I will say, these are my people and they will say, the Lord is our God. Amen. Amen. God listening to him? Mm -hmm. Even though we're going to go through some some things? What happens when we go through some things, though, according to Zechariah? What's he doing? He's purifying us. Mm -hmm. yes. He's making us better. There are some things in our lives that really need to come out. Mm -hmm. Come off. Mm -hmm. Are you telling me that I still have an attitude sometimes? Mm -hmm. yes, I yeah. Do. God's got to get rid of it. Yes. Are you telling me that I got words in there that probably shouldn't be coming out of my mouth no more? I probably do. Yeah. You mean the way that I conduct myself when I really, really get irritated? That really shouldn't be part of my life no more? Yeah, it shouldn't. But God has to take us through areas of our life so that we call on Him and we need Him and we tell Him to help us. But He's doing it to help us. He's doing it to show us that that does not belong. Call on me and I'll help you. But I'm letting that thing get to you right now. I'm letting that fire burn those things out of your life. But if we're stubborn, or in a <laughs> if we're stubborn, right? If we're stubborn, what happens? Yeah. And then we're wondering why, right? Well, here's the thing is, sometimes we, we don't want to learn the lesson. We don't want to look at it like that. You did that just because you're, 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 you're still the same person. There's a lesson. God is allowing us to go through something so that he can, he's poking at that thing that don't belong in your life. He's poking at it. And we don't want, we don't want to own up to it. We don't want to let it go, sister. And I know the thought with me that I'm trying to let things go and it seems like they just keep coming and coming and there I go reacting. You know, I, I really try since we talked Amen. that night, and I'm really, really trying to let a lot of stuff go, 
I'm not I'm not responding out of faith as much as no, I you're was. responding, not reacting. Well, reacting. Yeah. Reacting. We, That's what you want to do. We we have to trust that God is allowing things to happen in our life to make us better. Not because he's mad at us. God's not torturing you. He wants to identify things in your life that you need to get rid of. He does the same thing with me. But it's, it's almost like habit, right? It's like sometimes, habit, sometimes it's, it's habit. ingrained. The Bible says, "Root it out, yeah. root it out," because yeah. those things. Well, cut it off is one thing, yeah. but digging the root out sometimes that hurts. Yeah, because you can cut, cut it. It'll off, grow back. Yeah, and it will cut. <laughs> but, but there's but there's some people there's some people that just they're happy with what. Ooh, that's the way I've always there been. Is, it's not that. They're going up or they're going down. They're at a level where they they feel they figure, oh, I'm going right here. Yeah. And that's, that's why there's no growth there. Yeah. That's why there's no growth. But no you know what? God wants us to be fruitful. Mm-hmm. But how? Even a tree gets pruned. Mm-hmm. If your if your attitude is that of a person that is never ready to accept correction, something's wrong. If your pastor, if your leaders, if your brother or sister in Christ cannot really talk to you about the way you're doing this or the way you've been reacting, something is wrong. Something's wrong. Even a tree gets pruned. What did Jesus say about the fig tree that wasn't giving no fruit anymore? Get rid of it. Get rid of it. Cut it down. Throw it in the fire. Is that what he wants? Is that what we want? Is that what we want? For the Lord to finally just get tired of us and say, no "No fruit. We have to constantly be in a state of, Lord, help me. And mean it. Show me. Prune us. Trim us. Right? Help us. Constantly. I'm telling you, we're never, ever, we're not going to reach perfection here. I'll tell you that. And I think I need to accept that. Like, not like being a perfectionist, but like you're saying, it's like, sometimes I feel like, you know, are we going to ever get to this point? I've told, mentioned that to Pastor, like, I think we will get to, for me, like a, a level of true faith and obedience and help. Yeah, you know, but like Brother Tommy's saying, um, I guess that fight will always be there, right? Well, because once you feel like, oh, okay, I'm there. Then it's something you're at another yeah, level. Yeah, yeah. You're at another level to be like, okay, now I got to get to that one. It's like a game, right? I tell you. You what. always want to get to the next level because you want to get higher. The devil's bag of tricks is a big bag of tricks, mm-hmm. right? That this is why sometimes those areas in our lives, the enemy knows which button to push. Right. Mm-hmm. He knows what's going to get us. Right. He knows that. And we continue to react to that same push yeah. until we we don't react anymore. But he will find something else. Why? This flesh gets in the way. So, but we can't use those things as excuses. Ex- excuses. I, well, I'm I'm only human. I, I'm this flesh. No, no. God wants us to go to those other levels in our lives. So. We cannot react. I, I'm, I'm so used to years of reacting the same way. Somebody tell me something and what? Well, that's just me. That's it. No, it's not. It should not be you no more. Because you should be in the image of Christ. And, and that's what we're striving for, to be that. And all these little things. Mm-mm. The enemy says, I know what gets gets her going. I know what gets him going. I know what, what things are going to disrupt their lives again. Mm-hmm. Then we're back down. He keeps chopping at us. Mm-hmm. So what's the difference between reaction and response? Amen. <laughs> Y'all don't remember? We gave you the paper to hang up, sister. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. hanging it up. The difference between a reaction and a response. Three seconds. Three seconds. Really? Yes. I, 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 I say that at school, and then I bring up uh, Cain Velasquez, the UFC fighter, you know. There was somebody who was molesting a family member at this mm-hmm. thing, and, and he got in the car, and he got a gun, and he started running down the street shooting him. Reaction. 
really did it have to be done that way? Now he's in prison, UFC fighter guy, you know what I mean? Right. In prison now. Yeah. Reaction, response. Sometimes we need to just zip it. Yeah. Think about it, take it to the Lord. You don't have to respond, you don't have to react right now. Mm -hmm. Turn around. Mm -hmm. doesn't take long to mess it up. It, it doesn't take long to mess it up, brother. Yeah, that's right. You talking to me? That's it. You talking to me? Nobody's <laughs> <laughs> right. talking to right. me. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Nobody's talking to me. Yeah. 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 All I'm talking to you guys. <laughs> Brother Paul, what was that? No, I'm just saying it's pride. It that is. That's that pride. It is. Yeah, we want to, we want to, you know what I mean? We want to. And it's easy. But like we learned, that's flesh right? Active. active listening is not just waiting for your turn to say something. That's not listening. Oh man, I got something good to tell you. You just do that at me, I'm gonna throw something right back at you. That's not listening. That's not loving on your partner. Throwing something right back at them. We're done. Sister Rita. So I say to you, um, I'm sorry, Luke 11, 9. Amen. So I say to you, action, it will be given to Amen. you. Amen. I can't even see. You. So, 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 so I say to you, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock I and the door will open. be opened to you. Read the next one. For everyone who asks, receives. The one who seeks, finds. And the one who knocks on the door will be open. Seeking. Seeking the Lord. We have a lot of action that is demanded on our part. Effort is demanded on our part. We cannot just sit there and wait for the Lord to give me. Right? It's like a spoiled child. We were just talking. Effort is demanded on our part. We need to show up to church, we need to show up to the service, we need to show up to, to help, we need to do this, we need to do that, pastor can't do it all on her own, the leaders can't all do it on their own, you know, there's so many, God is starting to bring people into our church here, into El Buen Pastor, and it's going to take all of us to bring this church to the next level. We're going to have to pour into each other. We can't just sit there and expect for the same people to be the ones to do it all the time. Mm -hmm. God has something for each and every one of us. Our families. Now are we ready to take that? Zachariah and, and his wife. They was going to get a miracle baby. A miracle baby. Brother Paul. Oh, I thought you had something to say. No, I'm just... So Sister Rita read hers, Luke 11, uh, 9. My Bible actually, I, on the on the margins, it says James 2, 6, pointing to that. I don't even know why. What does it say in James 2, 6? Brother Paul, find that for me, please. Sister Monica, in the book of John, chapter 15, verse 7, what does it say? If you remain in me, and my words remain in you, Ooh. ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. There, that's a little bit of, um, there's a little prerequisite there. If. Yeah. If I abide in you, and you abide in me, ask whatever you want. But I think that's where we fail, or that's where us as believers, me included, is we're asking and we're not doing our part, right? It's not a 50-50 thing here, right? The Lord is given way more than we're given to Him. We got a lot of catching up to do, huh, Pastor? <laughs> we got a lot of catching up to do. Brother Paul, Sister Monica, do you want to say anything on that? No. Thank you. <laughs> James 2, 6. James 2, 6. Why did I have that written down there? James 2, 6. What does it say? King James. Uh, but you have dishonored the poor. Mm -hmm. Is it not the rich who are exploiting you? Are they not the ones who are dragging you into court? Wow. 
the Lord is talking to the, the Pharisees there. Mm -hmm. We have to be careful with the things that we're doing. We have to be careful with the things that we're doing. Sister Monica read John 15, 7. Each and every one of these scriptures that we read here are promises that God is going to answer us. That is a promise. Who is God that he should lie? But then I'm going to end with 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 8 and 9. Second one. Second Corinthians chapter twelve verse eight. verse eight and nine. I think I have from seven all the way to ten under well, the weird thing is I only have nine. Okay. He's not here, but we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna I mean look at if you look it's all in different different I I like one time I read this, another time I read this. It's different different colors. Yeah. A different time. Like we were saying, there's certain parts of our Bible that are, you could tell when you were in that area of life, you know, like you're looking Well, for like on my phone, on my, the Bible on my phone, if there's scriptures that I'm reading on Sunday, I have out in yellow, but if there's scriptures that I'm getting through Sunday school, during Sunday school service, I have out in pink or blue or something, like different color, so I know, you know. Well, I underline this Bible because one day, my children and my grandchildren are going to look at this Bible and they're going to be like, I wonder what Papa was doing then. Yeah. That's my prayer. That's my prayer. Did God hear me? Yes, he did. So now I have to act like that. Right? I have to be that example. So when they say, look it, Papa must have preached on this. Papa must have taught about this. Right? I mean, it makes me get emotional just thinking about it. But that's a promise. That's a promise of God. But let's read <laughs> chapter 8. 12. 12. Chapter 12, verse 8. Three different times I begged the Lord, my Bible says, take it away. And each time he said, my gracious favor is all you need. My power works best in your weakness. So now I am glad to boast about my weakness so that the power of Christ may work through You are praying and asking, and it hasn't come to pass yet, but that's okay. God likes it when you're right there and you need him. Because if he gave it to you like you said, sister, we would stop asking. We need him every day. I need him every day. We need him every day, and that's why our prayers don't get answered like, like throwing things in the microwave. Making quesadillas in the microwave. That's like you can't even call that a quesadilla. <laughs> right? The cheese is melted in the tortilla is one, but it's not. It's not a quesadilla. Yeah. God allows us to go through things just like, I believe this was the thorn you were talking about earlier. The thorn. The Apostle Paul says, something's going on, Lord. I think it was a person. I don't know. Maybe it was a person. This person. How many people do we have in our lives that just irritate us? Oh God. <laughs> how many, how many, how many people? And yes, it would be beautiful for for Brother Tommy to be able to go to work and, and minister and teach the word of God and, and 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 lead people to the Lord. But you know what? I can't do that just like that. The surrounding area, there are people that are of other faith. There are people that are that are the opposite faith. There's someone there that I believe is, is anti-God. And I am in a spiritual battle at work. 
And as, as much as I would love for the Lord to just get rid of all that people, every day I open up this book and I start claiming and I start calling and I start speaking things into the atmosphere. I come against spirits. I come against demons, witchcraft, envy, jealousy, the counsel of ungod ungodly people. I speak this stuff in my room by myself. I am warring. As much as I would love for him to take these people out of my life, he has me in a place right now where I am calling on him every day. Zachariah and Elizabeth. I don't know how long that prayer was for a child, but I'm sure it was. He says they were old. The story goes on to say that Zachariah, because he didn't believe, he was made to not say nothing. But the truth of the matter is that Zechariah had to go home that day and try to communicate to his wife that we got a miracle coming. Did she believe him? Yes, she did. The story doesn't say that she didn't believe. As a matter of fact, the story says that when the baby actually was born, she says, we're going to name him John. Yeah. And the family came around and they're like, hey, wait a minute. We don't name people just any old name. You ain't got no Johns in our family. The custom was, right, to get a bunch of beer and have a birthday party for a first, firstborn baby and, and get all drunk. That was the custom of the, of the time, right? But no. <laughs> the, the point I'm trying to make is that John, I mean, Zachariah and Elizabeth were going against what everybody else was used to doing. The tradition. The tradition is the baby should have been named Zachariah after the father. The firstborn male child should have been named after the father. And she says, nope, his name's going to be John. Did she speak to the angel? Who spoke to the angel? Did Zachariah? He still was dead. He was still mute. He was still mute, he was still mute sister. Yeah, but then the angel, didn't the angel spoke, spoke to Zachariah when he went into the Only Zachariah. Yeah, yeah. So John was the only one that knew about the baby and the name. Mm -hmm. But somehow he had to find a way to transfer this information about this miracle. And his wife says, I believe it. Maybe Zachariah stopped praying. Maybe his wife never stopped praying. Is there something in our lives that sometimes we might get tired of waiting for? God still, he's still on the throne. He hasn't changed. Zechariah ended up, I believe, asking for something to write with. We calling him John. Because the family turned and said, you're the boss, you're the man of the house, you're the high priest, John. They said instantly, the Bible says, he began to speak. So here we have this man and woman of God who had a miracle taking place in their life. God has a miracle for you. God has a miracle for you. God has a miracle for you, Sister Rita and Brother Dan. God has something new for your marriage and your life and your relationship. But are you going to allow God to birth it into your lives? Or are we going to continue to act like the same old people? Those of you online, Facebook, God has something for each and every one of our, our lives. But are we going to allow God to birth it? Because birth, you know, maybe not for the man, but for the woman is a little, it comes with a little bit of pain. Correct me if I'm wrong. I remember the nails in my arm. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. 
flashback. <laughs> this birthing that we're talking about comes from God. Now, if you are up to the task, if you are up to the task, <coughs> God wants to do something in your life. Yes, Lord. God wants to do something in our lives. But it's going to take both of you. Don't allow God to mute you. Don't, don't, don't allow yourselves to be put into a situation where you turn your back on God or you try to fix it yourself or you're not waiting on Him. Let it come in His time, but we got to work together. That's what this season is all about, is God working together in our lives as a couple, as a power couple. But I'm, 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 I'm going to let you in on a secret. The devil's not going to just let it be so easy. It's easy if you follow the word and, and, and the more you get into it, it's easier it gets. But if you try to do it yourself, it's hard. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, in the morning, there's two things I read in this book. And over the last month, I begin to read other things, but I go back to two things, and I'm going to read the first one. I know it's getting late. We've kind of taken up too much time, um, um, but I want you to listen to this. This says, I quench with the shield of faith every fiery dart the enemy sends my way. I quench every fiery dart of jealousy, envy, anger, bitterness, and rage set against my life. I quench every fire ban sent against my life by the enemy in the name of Jesus. And then it has the book of Isaiah chapter 7 verse 4. I bind and rebuke, rebuke every spirit of jealousy directed against my life in the name of Jesus. I quench every fire the enemy would throw into my sanctuary in the name of Jesus. We are the temple of God and the enemy is trying to burn up our sanctuary. We have to come against these things. In the name of Jesus. We have to call it for what it is. 
I bind and cast out every fiery serpent sent against my life in the name of Jesus. I quench every burning lamp that comes from the Leviathan's mouth. I will not be burned by the fire of the enemy. I overcome every fiery trial sent against my life by the enemy. The enemy will not be able to burn up my harvest. Do you know the seeds that are being planted in your children's life will one day come, will give a harvest and the enemy's trying to yeah. burn that out. The seeds that are planted in your family's life are going to come and bring a harvest at some point. And the enemy wants to burn that. We have to come against him. We have to claim it. No, the enemy's not going to burn up that harvest. In the name of Jesus, I quench every fire of wickedness sent against my life in the name of Jesus. I quench every ungodly word spoken against my life in the name of Jesus. I quench every torch the enemy would use against my life in the name of Jesus. I quench all gossip directed against my life in the name of Jesus. The enemy's flame will not kindle upon me. <laughs> <laughs> we have to war God has something he wants to do in your life God has something he wants to do in your marriage God has something he wants to do in your marriage and in my marriage and in your marriage online but we have to identify we have to smell that chamuco coming brother Dan mm -hmm. Recognize it. It's not him coming against you or you coming against him. It's not supposed to be that. It's the enemy who is trying to stir us up and burn that harvest. Starting with our temple, he's throwing things through the windows to burn up our sanctuary. And if you let him, he's gonna. Now remember, you're a power couple. Power couple means what? You're a team. She is not your opponent. She is your teammate. He is not your opponent. He's your teammate. So you guys are to work together. So you can power through everything and anything that knowing God, as, as long as God's right here, we're going to power through it. We're going to get through it. He's not my opponent. I'm not his opponent. We're teammates. We're supposed to be working together to power through whatever the enemy has coming our way. Is it easy? Nope. It is not easy. Is the promise of God that he'll be with us every step of the way? Yep. Yes. Thank you, Lord. He's not going to leave us alone. Mm -hmm. He's not going to forsake us. I know we have some prayers that we need to pray for. I know there's some things that we've spent a little bit of time. <laughs> yeah. 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 To, yeah, promises, to promises. Sorry, promises to remind us of you know what we battle and how God hears us. And I always think it's a good to write it on a posty and stick it around. You know, I, I like that. So I used to be Leo. Leo's wall was like this. He would have both bits of scriptures and scriptures and scriptures and scriptures. I'm finishing a book of the of the Evans family oh, yeah. kingdom, Divine Interruptions. And Priscilla, I think it was, or her sister, I'm not sure which one it was, but she says, in every room there is a posty, God's word. So yeah. as you enter wow. every room, there is a posty with the word of God there. Brother Eric says, Romans 12, 14 through 21, and you can read this on your own time. Brother Tommy, uh, Sister Rosie's son, Manny, and Lisa's favorite prayer for her family. God knows each and every prayer request. God knows. Sorry, Pastor, you said Romans 12. I just wanted to mention 12, 14 through 21. Sister Rosie's uh, faithful prayer is for her son Manny and, and, and his family and her family. You know, just like our children are special and, and we, man, we want our children to be lifted up. Sister Rosie's asking for her son Manny. His tumor is shrinking. Amen. 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 That's a 
Praise the Lord. Lisa's always asking for her mother, Elida. She has a sister named Samiko, and Samiko and Reyes. Reyes has had uh, uh, issues, uh, health issues, you know, over the past year or so. Um, so it's hard when your partner is suffering, right? Both man and woman, both suffer. They're both being in a place of like, maybe they need restoration in their spiritual life. Maybe they need physical strength. Who knows? Sister Lisa's asking for her sister Melinda, her sister-in-law Liz and Aiden, which is her nephew. Stephen, who's her cousin Robert, Joshua, and my son Christian, who are in the military. She always asks for Pastor Madeline, and she asks for all of you every time. Sister Lisa asks for the EVP family. For, pray for each other. Keep them lifted up. She's asking for Joshua for grief. He must be still grieving. Joshua, he, he lost his son, correct? Yeah. In a in a car motorcycle. Motorcycle accident. Losing your son, anyways, probably yeah. hard to deal with. Huh? <sighs> Tio Tacho. Tio Tacho lost his wife. Um, Lydia has gone to be with the Lord and Rose Rose is the uh, widow of uh, of, uh, of Moses Moses was Brother Tito's uh, son Brother Eric's asking prayer for his financial situation and for everywhere the Lord will be taking him Amen So, help me pray for these prayers, yes. okay? As we take them to the Lord and, and we finish um, our, our three-week uh, study and, and talk about this power couple and how their lives now are... They, that this, this study has kind of opened my eyes up to a lot of different things as far as their, their life and in the Word of God. I hope it did to you. I hope it did to you online. Help me pray. Father in heaven, we know that you are the same yesterday, today, and forever, Lord. Sister Rosie is asking for her son, Manny, and family, Heavenly Father. Sister Rosie is asking for her family, for, for her husband, for all her grandkids, and for everyone in her family that is associated with her, like Master... Like, like Monica says, anybody that's attached to Sister Rosie, let them be blessed. Let them be prosper. Heavenly Father, she's asking that, that they would be lifted up for her son, Manny, that he would have this healing to continue, Lord, in his life. You already begin shrinking this tumor, Lord Jesus, and we ask it. Like Brother Joey says, stretch out your nail-scarred hands, Heavenly Father. Your word says that because of your stripes, we are healed. So we're claiming that for Manny. We're claiming that right now, Father, that you would begin to work in, in their lives. Lord, Sister Lisa is always asking for her family, the Moreno family, for Elida, for Samiko Reyes, Heavenly Father, Melinda, for Liz Aiden, Stephen, Joshua, Robert, for my son Christian, Father, for Joshua's grief, for Theo Tacho, and for Rosie, Heavenly Father. She's asking for Pastor Mallet and for the EVP Church, Lord. You know each and every area. You know each and every need, Heavenly Father, that you would continue to work, Heavenly Father, in each and every one of our lives, Heavenly Father. My brother Eric is asking that you would that you would start to work in his life also, Father. He's allowing you, Father. He's giving you room to intervene into his life, Father, in his financial area. For everything you have going on in Brother Eric's life, Heavenly Father, I claim right now, Father, that you are going to take charge of what is happening in Brother Eric's life and, 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 and Rosie's life, Heavenly Father. Father, I have Heavenly Father in front of me. The book of Micah chapter 2, Father. Chapter 13 and 14 says that the Lord himself 
is the breaker. You go before us, Heavenly Father, breaking those things that would try to hinder us. And I call on the breaker, the Lord who goes out before us, takes care of those traps that were set out ahead of time, Lord. You break them, Father. You tear them down. Those strategies and those snares and those things that might be set out before our lives, Heavenly Father, you go and take care of those. We give you your authority. We, we surrender to your ability and your authority, Father. You go out before us and you take care of these things. You intervene in our children's lives, Heavenly Father. If you need to go out before our children and break those things, even though they're not where they need to be, we're asking you, Father, your power, your authority, Father. Take control of their lives, Lord Jesus. Each and every one of our family members, the body of Christ here, we thank you for this three-week session that we had here father we ask that you start to work in the lives of those that are going to listen to tonight if they listen to it already father bless them let them let them be with it let something be planted in their lives father those that might listen to it later on youtube or wherever else it gets posted lord i pray that you would you would just touch their life father there is no distance too far time is nothing to you lord if somebody watches this next month, next year, yeah. you are still there. I speak that into the atmosphere, Lord. You take control, Lord, of everything that's going to happen in our lives and in the lives of the people that are watching now and later on, Father. Father, we love you. We thank you. We give you praise. We don't dismiss from your presence ever, but we are dismissing from this meeting, yes. from this congregation, yes. this meeting, this, this, this time we spend here, Father. We love you. We thank you for everything you're doing in our lives. Allow us to take what we've learned and expand on it and learn more. Yes. I love you. I thank you. And in Jesus' mighty, holy name, we say amen. 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 Thank you, Pastor. God bless everybody.